Hello, tribe. Welcome to today's lunchtime flow. It's Alicia, and I'm going to guide you through your practice. So for today's flow class, um, it's going to be a little less of a flow, and we're really going to work on opening into the hips. Um, we tend to store a lot of stress and emotions in our hips, especially females. So that is going to be our primary focus today. If you've not already set up your mat, go ahead and get yourself set up. Have some water handy if you need to. Definitely make sure to drink lots of water um, after your practice today too. And let's get into it. So we're actually going to start um, sitting on the feet, just bringing the hips down onto the feet. Bringing the hands behind the back, fingers facing inward. Start to lean back, maybe lift the hips up a little bit, and then back down. Sending them back up, just moving with the breath a little bit here. Back down. Inhale, cross them up. And exhale, bring them back down. Again, inhale up. And exhale down. And now this time we're gonna lift the knees up a little bit. So we're gonna stretch into the fronts of the feet a little bit. If you already are feeling an opening into the tops of the feet, keeping the knees down, you can just lean back. You don't need to lift the knees, but if that helps you get a nice stretch and it feels good, then lift the knees, maybe even finding a little bit of movement. Good, kind of massaging the tops of the feet too, getting that blood flow there. All right, and then coming forward. Let's tuck the toes and send the hips up into downward facing dog. Now this is probably your first one of the day, so take some time to pedal the feet and walk it out if you need to. When you're ready to release the heels down toward the mat and find some stillness, Go ahead and come into that. Allow the head to hang heavy. Relax the shoulder blades down the back, bring the navel in toward the spine. We'll look between the hands, inhale coming up onto the balls of the feet and then start to gently tiptoe them forward keeping them hip distance apart as we come into our forward fold. Allow the upper body to just completely hang heavy here. No effort required at all. We're gonna walk the feet out a little wider than hip distance, turning the toes out 45 degrees, gently start to bring the hips down toward the heels coming into your yogi squat, malasana. So the heels might not come down all the way if you need to, maybe bring the feet a little wider. Find what feels good here, what works for you. Hands are at heart center, a little bit of pressure between the palms and start to notice that energy building there. Shoulders stay relaxed down and away from the ears. We're opening up into the hips a little bit, also stretching into the ankles. If you wanna find a little bit of movement, if that feels good, you can. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So just being aware of what your body's asking of you today, take it nice and easy. Good, we'll release the hands back down onto the mat. Coming back into your forward fold, bring the feet back in hip distance apart. Hands release down on the mat. Let's step that left foot back. So keeping the left leg lifted up off of the mat for right now, we're gonna just <clears throat> move into our lunge a little bit here. So maybe drop the hip down and lift it up or shift it forward and back. Just finding something that feels good here. Um, for me personally, dropping that left hip down a little bit gives me a little opening there that feels really nice. 
but this is your practice. All right, we're gonna release that back knee down onto the mat along with the top of the foot. Lifting the chest, interlace the fingers, bring them to the top of the thigh. Low lunge, optional back bend here, really getting a nice opening into the front of the left hip. Good, and then releasing the chest forward again. Left hand comes down. Let's sweep that right arm up for a little twist. And release that back down onto the mat. Hands coming to the inside of the right foot. We're gonna heel toe it out a little wider than hip distance, turning the toes out, making sure that the knee is either directly over the ankle or the an ankle is actually forward from the knee a little bit as we come down into our lizard pose. Again, really opening up into the front of that left hip. If it's not available to you to come down on the arms, you can stay up on the hands or maybe use some blocks here if that feels good. One more breath. And then walking that right foot all the way over towards the left hand, we're gonna prepare for pigeon pose. Dropping the right knee across from the foot as much as you can. We're gonna square the hips. We want the hips to be nice and even. And then slowly, gently start to sink down onto the hips, making sure that we're not on the front of the shin, right? We don't wanna put any pressure on the knee. Taking a slight flex into this right foot. Now, if this is too much, you can always place a block underneath of the right hip or um, take the variation on your back. And there is a video in the Yoga Basics um, page in the video library that will walk you through the different variations of pigeon if you would um, like some different options. So from here, sitting up nice and tall, take an inhale. Exhale, slowly start to walk the hands forward if it's available to you to come down onto the forearms or all the way down onto your belly here. Find your expression of pigeon pose today. Using the breath to open up into the body. As you inhale, we send that breath into that right hip where you're experiencing some of the tension and then exhale, allow that tension to just melt away with the breath. We're gonna hold this one for a little bit. So probably stay here for about a minute Keeping your awareness on your breath. Gently start to lift the chest, walking the hands back in. I think I've got allergies, I apologize for all the sniffling. All uh, right, from here, tucking those left toes, lift that back leg, stepping the right foot back. We're just gonna come straight back into a downward dog. So we'll allow the circulation to return into the right leg here a little bit. Find some movement if you want. Again, allow the head to hang heavy. Stepping the left foot forward this time, keeping the right heel lifted up off of the mat. Hands come down, take your lunge. Again, just moving into the lunge here, finding the movement that feels good. And maybe it's different on this side than it was on the right. Maybe on the right side, it felt nice to drop that hip, and on this side, it feels better to take a little rock front to back. Good. We'll release that knee and the top of the foot down on the mat, lifting the chest, hands coming to the thigh, optional back bend as we come down deeper into our lunge. Good. 
Good, shifting forward from here. Right hand comes down to the mat, sweeping that left arm up. And then releasing that hand back down, bringing both hands to the inside of the left foot, walking it out a little bit, turn those toes out, wiggle the foot forward a little bit if you need to, and make your way into your variation of lizard pose. I think maybe intuitively, without knowing it, I picked a hip opening sequence today because maybe that's what I needed. I'm feeling very tight in the hips today. If you're experiencing the same thing, just allow yourself to acknowledge it without judgment. We're gonna reach back up with the chest, hands coming back down onto the mat, walk that foot over towards the right hand. Again, dropping the knee, squaring the hips. And then when you're ready, allow the hips to come down nice and evenly on the mat. Sitting up nice and tall. Modify however you need. And then we'll start to walk the hands forward if it's available for you. You may notice one side, um, you know, feels tighter than the other or just different. Again, acknowledge without judgment. We're gonna be here for just a little bit longer. Remember to bring the awareness back to the breath, using the breath as a tool to allow you to open up deeper into the pose. Start to lift the chest back up, walking the hands back in, tucking the right toes, lift that leg, spin the left foot back, coming into our downward dog again. Taking a cleansing breath here, inhale through the nose, open the mouth, let it go. Shifting forward, dropping the knees onto the mat, lifting the chest and preparing for camel pose. So the knees are gonna come right underneath of the hips. Feet can either stay in line with the knees or if you wanna bring them together, touching the toes, creating a tripod, that's another option. I'm gonna leave mine hip distance apart, bringing the hands to the lower back, fingertips facing the floor, squeezing the elbows and the shoulder blades together, really engaging the core here. On your next exhale, we're gonna press the hips forward, reaching up and back, with the chest, like an arc of a rainbow. And if it's in your practice, you can release the hands down to the feet or the ankles. If you notice your hips come back, press them forward again. We wanna keep the hips stacked over the knees here, releasing the head, really opening up into the front of the hips. When you're ready to come out of it, we'll tuck the chin to the chest, hands if they're on the feet, come back up to the lower back, gently bringing ourselves back up, releasing the hands down on the mat, knees come wide, sending the hips back onto the heels for child's pose.
try to keep the arm active here. Connecting with the breath. We're going to be here for a few more breaths. Focusing on sending that inhale into the lower back, allowing the space around the sacrum to expand. Exhaling out through the front of the chest. Gently start to lift the head and the chest back up. Lifting the hips up off the heels. Keep the knees where they are. We're actually going to bring them out a little bit wider. So you may want to turn on your mat. I definitely want to turn on mine. We're going to bring the knees out nice and wide and try to keep the feet and the knees in line as we come into frog pose. So if it's available to come down onto the forearms, Really getting a nice deep opening here. And maybe play around with your positioning a little bit. So send the hips forward a little bit, send the hips back. Notice where your body's asking you to go. And then honor that. Start to lift the chest, hands coming back up, nice and easy, bringing the knees back in together. Cross the feet and make our way onto our seats. All right, soles of the feet coming together for Baddha bound angle. Lifting up nice and tall in the spine and then gently allow yourself to just roll forward here. Hands can stay on the feet. Pressing the elbows gently into the legs, or if you want to release the hands down out in front. Making your practice your own. And learning to find what feels good. It's a practice, it takes some time to clearly understand some of the signals from your body. And that's why yoga is a practice, always a practice. Gently start to lift back up, rolling our way back up. There we go. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn sideways here. We are going to come into half Lord of the Fishes. So keeping the left leg extended, we're gonna bring the right foot across the left leg. Now, if it's in your practice, if you want to bend that left leg and bring it in, you can. If this doesn't feel good for you, just keep the leg extended. The right hand is gonna release down next to our seat. Inhale the left arm up, and then exhale, twisting from the core, release the left elbow to the right knee, looking out over the right shoulder. If it's in your practice to take a bind, you can take a bind. Each inhale, we extend in the spine. Each exhale, we twist just a little bit more maybe, if it's there for you. And then we'll go ahead and release if the left leg is bent in, go ahead and extend it, bringing that right foot to the inside of the left thigh, bringing the left leg out just a little bit here. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, turning over that left leg, hinging forward at the hips for Johnny's Sirsasana. We're leading forward with the chest. We want to press the chest down toward the knee. And if you aren't, um, super tight in the hamstrings, you should really feel this opening up into the outside of the right hip here. A few more breaths. Okay. 
Gently coming back up, nice and easy. And let's bring the legs wide. Coming into our wide-legged seated forward fold. Start to just make sure that the feet are flexed. Try to keep the toes from going forward. Keep those kneecaps pointed toward the ceiling. We're gonna walk the hands forward. Keeping the spine extended here. So this is a spot where we really wanna round into the spine. But focus on lifting to the spine first and again, leading forward with the chest here. So bring those shoulder blades back. Reaching forward with the chest is a lot harder than rounding into the spine. So maybe you find that you only come forward a couple inches and that's fine, right? Because we're getting into a, a little slightly different area than we are when we round. We're not wanting to stretch into the back. We're wanting to stretch into the legs and the hips. So really hinging forward at the hips is key. Again, using our breath to allow ourselves to come into the pose even deeper. This is another good spot to have a block handy if it's available to you. And relax the forehead onto a block. We'll take one more breath here. And then gently walk the hands back in. Bringing that left foot to the inside of the right thigh now. Turning a little bit towards the leg. You don't want it straight in front of you. You want it out to like your two o'clock. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, turning over that right leg and then hinging forward. Again, getting a nice opening into the outside of the left hip this time. Reaching forward with the chest and the chin. Keeping the right foot flexed. Gently bringing ourselves back up. Okay, from here, again, we're gonna bring that left foot across the right thigh. Option to leave the right leg extended, or if it feels good, you can bend it in. Bringing the left hand down next to your seat. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale, twist from your center. Release the elbow to the knee, looking out over that left shoulder. Again, if it's in your practice to take a bind, you can. This is a little bit of a advanced bind, but if you have it, you don't want to compromise the extension in the spine for it. So if you're going for the bind, but you're rounding forward to get it, then go ahead and come out of it. You want to make sure that the spine stays nice and straight while you're in your twist. So each inhale, again, we're lengthening up and then exhale, twisting a little bit further. Hello, Orion. One more breath here. And then gently release. All right, let's bring the soles of the feet down onto the mat. Gently begin to roll yourself all the way down. Knees coming into the chest. Maybe find a little rock here, side to side, front to back, whatever feels good. Massage the lower back on the mat. Bring the knees wide, hands coming to the outside of the feet or the peace sign fingers, big toe. Find a little rock here in your happy baby. One final little hip opening here. All right, releasing the hands down onto the mat, palms up, legs coming out in front, extending the legs to each corner of the mat and then allowing the feet to gently just relax out to the side, closing the eyes and returning the breath back to normal. Allowing yourself to come into your final resting pose of Shavasana.
Scanning the body from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet, noticing anywhere that you're still experiencing any tension in the body. As you inhale, send that breath into that space, into that tension. And then as you exhale, allow the breath to gently melt the tension away. Feeling yourself sinking deeper and deeper into your relaxation with each and every exhale. Please stay here in your Shavasana as long as you'd like. Thank you so much for being here with me today. It was truly my honor and privilege to guide you through your practice. Namaste.